conceptual people talk about all of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. You're off to a great start. Look, uh, this one won't be long. Um, I'm winding down my day. I've been going for a while today. I'm winding down my day. It's roughly about four. So, um, I've been going since before the sun came up this morning. Uh, Saturdays are usually a work day for me. But anyway, look. I want to talk to you for a minute. As you know, we're in the middle of a fundraiser, so I want to get this out of the way. If you believe in the work we do, if you follow me for any stretch of time, you know all the things we've been doing over the last 20 plus years in the community. You know the work I've done in research, uh, our think tank, our program like Black Man Lead, uh, so many other programs that deal with mental health, uh, intimate partner violence, domestic violence, childhood sexual abuse, and so much more. We need to expand our reach. We need to be able to be more consistent in the fulfillment of the wraparound services and programs we offer. We need more uh, funding for research. And we need you to support that. This thing isn't going to happen because we wish for it or because we feel it's owed to us. It's going to happen because we make it happen. So again, I'm challenging you to support the work we do. Now, this is going to be real quick and to the point. Some people are go aren't going to like it. Some people are going to be indifferent to it. And I'm, I'm good with all of that. You guys know I'm not here. Uh, to be liked. I'm here to teach. I'm here to share. I'm here to learn and when there's the opportunity to do so. But I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what you need to hear. And I am officially putting it out there. It's time for black people, male or female, to stop using the term toxic masculinity. I put toxic masculinity in the same category as I put black on black crime. Why? Well, uh, and I'll go back and I'll explain. I've written on it, I've lectured on the whole black on black crime thing. That stuff is in books. It's in it's in Born in Captivity. It's in The Miseducation of Black Youth. It's in the ac Academic Apartheid. It's in The Undoing of the African American Mind. Four of my books, I've addressed the black on black uh, crime myth. It's not that there isn't black on black crime, absolutely black on black crime. Just like there's white on white crime, Asian on Asian crime. Most pr crime is proximal. So that means you normally commit crimes around the people you're around. 84% of uh, homicides of white people are committed by other whites. 84% never hear white on white crime. Why? Because it doesn't present the narrative. It doesn't present the story and the narrative that they want to tell with that. So I, I talked about it. Until we want, we're willing to talk about why things are the way they are, 
and not isolate it and make it a phenomenon, we're not going to talk about it. Here's why we don't need to use toxic masculinity anyway. First and foremost, it's a term created to gird and mask misandry, the attack and the diminishing of uh, the male presence, the male role, the male influence, the male impact. Uh, by those that consider themselves quote unquote to be feminists. True nature of feminism is the support and encouragement and the standing up for things that support the woman's right to be included, to be equal in her vein, in her situation, in her role. It's to make sure that we don't mishandle, misuse, or mistreat, or devalue our women. I'm 100% feminist when it comes to that. I'm not 100% feminist that in, in the idea that if it's a man, it's got to be something wrong with it. If a man's doing it, I don't want no part of it. Uh, any chance I get to demean or diminish a man, I'm going to do it. That's not feminism. That's misandry. That's an attack on the natural order of things. It's time out for that. That's one reason. The other reason is it, it's a misapplied idea or concept. There's no such thing as toxic masculinity. Masculinity in and of itself is a pure identity, a pure uh, state of being. Masculinity in its truest form isn't toxic. When you start talking about behavior that we like to identify as toxic masculinity, it's not masculinity at all. It's the furthest thing from masculinity. You can't take the opposite of something and then apply it to itself. You can't do that. You can't take someone, a, a, a man not protecting a woman and say that's toxic masculinity or a man attacking a woman and say that's, no, that's the absence of masculinity, not toxic masculinity. We need to identify it because toxic masculinity is an all out assault on the black, black male identity. What do I mean by that? See, what we start out with is we start identifying things that we don't like and we see in men as being toxic masculinity. The next thing you know, masculinity in it itself is under attack. We don't want a man to do this. We don't want a man. Anything that's considered manly is no longer acceptable because we are constantly diminishing the role of the man and if the man doesn't bow down and say yes and everything and and if he, he stands up if he squares his shoulders if he beats his chest if he holds his chin up then he's toxic the man wasn't meant to behave like the woman the man wasn't meant to sit back and and, and cower down cower down the man was meant to stand up and be bold now what we have to do is teach our young males what they should be standing for we shouldn't be quieting them we shouldn't be making them more docile we shouldn't be making them more compliant what we should be saying is these are the principles you stand for and under no circumstances do you bow down when you are pushed back based on these principles you die for these principles we got a bunch of black males willing to die for stuff that's not worth dying for but won't die for the things that can advance our people and that's on us but we shouldn't confuse that behavior with masculinity. It's not masculinity, it's not toxic masculinity. It's toxic behavior, but it's not masculine. The masculinity of a man is shown in his willingness to stand up and do the things that man do to ensure the safety of the environment that they are responsible for covering. But when we constantly hear toxic masculinity, what we're doing is we are muddying masculinity with a negative uh, precursor. It's common propaganda, social narrative, manipulation 101. Find something we don't like, find something we don't want to see, then associate it with something negative long enough and people will simply hate it, period. True masculinity doesn't dis diminish femininity. True masculinity does not overpower femininity. True masculinity merges almost effortless with femininity to create a synergy Feminine energy, masculine energy merging together to create something that cannot be accomplished by either one by themselves. That's what we are supposed to be doing, but that's not what we're doing. We're too busy tearing each other down. We're too busy, too busy 
finding everything we can wrong with the other side without searching ourselves to see what's wrong with us. I'm talking about on an individual level. I'm talking about on a gender level. I'm talking about classism. I'm talking about every way we find a way to divide ourselves and attack one another is actually working against us. And it doesn't lead to growth. It doesn't lead to empowerment. It doesn't lead to what we are capable of being. And that's on us. But it's enough with the toxic masculinity. Same thing with black on black crime. And the same thing I, uh, uh, I, I, I uh, proposed then. When I say that black on black crime is not a phenomenon, I'm not saying that we aren't experiencing high levels of violence towards one another. What I'm saying is it's not a, an exclusive phenomenon that if you look inside any racial enclave, you'll find that most of the violence committed against the people in that enclave are committed by other people in the enclave. That's not unique to black people. So why isolate it, give it a term that nobody else has to carry? You don't hear Asian on Asian crime. You don't hear Arab on Arab crime. You don't hear white on white crime. Why do you hear black on black crime? Because it's giving an idea that we are animalistic, that we are subhuman, that we are sub-social standard, and that we behave in a way that nobody else in, the, in society behaves. Actually, we behave better based off of everything we've been through. When you put it on a scale, we've managed our emotions and our violence at an unbelievable level, because if we were to really act based on the way we'd be treated, nobody in this damn country would be safe. We're too friendly sometimes. And then there, and, 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 and it's not that I am okay with uh, black on black crime. I think we need to turn a lot of our aggression outward. I think that we need to throttle a lot of it and put that energy into positive things. But I also think that there are a bunch of things, like, like there's no way that um, Zimmerman still bouncing around. I'm sorry. It's too many of us killing each other for this cat to be moving around Florida like that. Somebody should have touched him a long time ago. Just, just period. There's just certain things we don't allow. And then there's certain things we shouldn't allow to happen in our hood. There's certain things that people are doing in our hood. They need to get touched. There has to be a code of conduct. But I'm, I could go on and on about this. But I had to touch that. I, I, it, it comes a point in time where you've got to look at something and say, look, there's so many things happening now that I told you guys 15 years ago was going to, I told you 15 years ago, this stuff was going to be here and it's here and everybody's acting brand new. No, you didn't listen. You didn't listen to Dr. Claude Anderson. You didn't listen to Dr. Kyle Muhammad. You didn't listen to Amos Wilson. You didn't listen to me. And, you're, and, and, and now you're looking and you're seeing what we predicted. Look at the books, read the books, go back to the site. Go and read articles dated seven, eight, nine years ago, and you're gonna see me predicting all the shit that's happening right now. And what are we gonna do about it? We're gonna have to actually dig in and invest in changing the narrative, changing the trajectory, changing the energy and the perceptions. That's on us, and it's gonna take work, it's gonna take energy, and yes, it's gonna take financial resources. It's time for us to get out of our own way. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out. Like I, like I said at the beginning, like it's obvious in every way, we need your support. This stuff can't be done without the support of the community. So on that note, I'm challenging you. Go to the description box or wherever you're watching this. Click the link and get. You can also give through the organization's cash app. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder.